to China 101 with Matt. Seeing as though I am stuck in the hospital, I figured this would be a good opportunity to do uh, Chinese healthcare. A little bit of background. I have a bacterial infection. Uh, I have for the past few days, so they put me on an IV drip of penicillin, and this is my last IV drip. I've been to a bunch of Chinese hospitals in the time that I've been in China. Everything from major surgery on my shoulder, I have nine screws and two pins in my shoulder, to uh, sicknesses and colds and flus and things like that. So I've had a lot of experiences in a lot of different hospitals. Everything from the rural Podunk Backwoods Hospital to uh, the higher and nicer hospitals in uh, Hong Kong and in Shenzhen. But uh, this one is a good middle of the road hospital. It's kind of new. It still has some of the uh, some of the isms, uh, China isms, that uh, I can help you to understand what healthcare is like in China. So let me finish my IV drip, and I'll walk you around and give you a little bit of a tour of a Chinese hospital. So for the first part, I'll talk a little bit about what makes the Chinese hospital kind of unique. Hello. Nurses in training. This is a toilet. There's no toilet paper. You have to bring your own. And that extends outwards too, to the sinks. These are not adjustable. There's no hot water. It's just cold. There's no soap. You have to bring your own. There's no paper to wash your hands or even a blow dryer. You have to bring all your own stuff. They actually have instructions on how to wash your hands. None of which really includes the addition of soap. For me, coming from America, that was one of the most difficult things to kind of wrap my head around. How do you expect people that go to a hospital with diseases and, and illnesses to keep those illnesses contained when they go to the bathroom, which is one of the dirtiest things a human can do. Very strange. Chinese hospitals can provide you with two types of remedies to your illness. If you want, you can get the typical American style of medicine, uh, acetaminophen and all those kind of things, and they will give them to you in these areas here. But there's also an area here that is designed specifically for herbal medicines. And you have all sorts of different herbs, natural things. You see these bags here? Those bags are full of different groups of material waiting for people to pick them up. These are their prescriptions. In each one of those pockets, there's a different sort of uh, herbal medicine, whether it's a mushroom or a leaf or some sort of dried object that can be crushed up, mixed up, and then placed into these bags. And then with every one of those bags, there's instructions, whether you cook it with tea, or you have it hot, or you have it twice a day, or you, or you steam it or eat it, I, I don't know. There's probably a million different ways you can have that Chinese medicine and actually take your prescription. Out of that room, you have this really interesting smell and it permeates the entire lobby of this hospital. It's very natural. It's almost like dried bark, I think. And uh, actually, I've had that medicine before. and I remember how it tastes. It doesn't taste very good. On the other side, you have the typical Western style of medicine where they give you the pills and the advice on how to take it. And that's where all my medicine is coming from. But hospitals in China are really growing to become more advanced. A lot of these kiosks here, for example, where people can come with their little, their little ID, uh, Chinese ID card, as well as their medical ID card, and then they can put in all their information and configure whatever uh, appointment they might want. For example, uh, the first step when you come to a Chinese hospital is going to the front desk and saying what your problem is. So the first thing you do, you go to the front desk or that kiosk and you say, I'm sick. I need uh, to go to somebody for my nose. And then you put it in the computer or you tell the person and they give you a ticket to go to the doctor that specializes in the nose. And then you go to that doctor. I think this whole area is on lunch break, which is convenient because I can kind of talk about it without 
having so many people. It's one of the weird things about right now. Normally Chinese hospitals are crazy busy with a ton of people, but I don't see so many people right now, so I'm kind of free to talk about it. This is the third clinic area. So after you go to the front desk and get your ticket, you come here and you meet with the doctor. Now what would happen is that screen right there would pop open with your name and say the doctor's ready to see you. But nobody waits for their name to be called. They simply go to the front desk where the doctor is and they start talking. Now each of us when we come to the Chinese hospital has a blue book like this. This is our um, diary, you would say. So it has all of our problems, everything that we've ever had wrong with us. Or like me, maybe you keep losing this and they keep having to start over again. But my book has the last couple of visits in it. You take this book into the room where the doctor is and you put it on their desk. You have to put it as close as you can to the doctor's face because there's probably going to be about 10 people in that room all waiting to get checked at the same time. The doctor basically takes whatever book is on the top as the next patient in line. And when I say line, I am pretty much say in the group because when you're in that room, you're surrounded by everybody else that is waiting to get checked up. Whatever your problem might be, whether it's a stuffy nose, an ear infection, or let's just say you have a growth on your balls or some sort of, sort of embarrassing problem. You better not be too shy about it. You're gonna have to talk about that problem to the doctor in front of everybody in the room. I know, it's very strange. It's one of the strangest things that I've had to experience <laughs> with regards to Chinese hospitals. I've even had to open up about a urinary tract infection in front of strangers who are all looking over my shoulder at my doctor who is writing my entire um, history on, the, on my little blue book and they're all taking pictures with their uh, phones to post on social media that wow this foreigner is coming in with a urinary tract infection. Isn't this interesting? You have to kind of get over the fact that your sickness is your your sickness and it becomes everybody with an earshot's story to tell. I've kind of grown used to it, which I never thought I would actually grow used to it, but, but I have. As far as the variety of things that can get done at a Chinese hospital, I would say that it's pretty complete. I've had MRI and CAT scans done here on a number of occasions and the machines they use are extremely high quality. It's one of the things that uh, I found very interesting about Chinese hospitals. Although there's no soap in the toilets, the MRI area has multi-million dollar machines at its disposal. <laughs> it's interesting. Another interesting thing about a Chinese hospital, and it's in its simplicity, when you come and you check in at that front computer, you can almost walk right in to see the doctor or walk right into the line of people that are seeing the doctor. I know in America you always have the time that you have to wait in the doctor's office before the doctor can come and see you. But you actually do in China, you go to the doctor and you say, hey, this is my problem. How are you gonna help me? And then he'll give you the next step in the process. Oh, you need to get the next, next thing checked or this next thing checked. So for example, it's up to you to take the next step and go to the laboratory and drop off your sample or for you to go and get to the, uh, the blood drawn section and pull the ticket for you to go and get your blood drawn. Even this time period I think is a unique thing. The fact that an entire hospital can shut down for lunchtime. Literally everybody in this hospital is just chilling out and taking care of themselves as far as lunch goes for the next you know hour or so. One thing that is kind of nice in China is that English is pretty popular. There's seems to be in every hospital I've been to always the chance to understand what each section of the hospital is and you can kind of find yourself around pretty easily but it is a unique place to go uh, but you shouldn't be scared of it. If you can kind of get over the uh, fact that it's a little bit dirty and you bring your own soap and you bring your own paper, you can find that 
you get a comparable quality of care um, as you might get in the States and you'll get what you need taken care of. It might be a little bit of a different process, but I've always found that uh, they offer solutions to your problems and you end up getting better. <laughs> Anyway, so that's a quick tour of a Chinese hospital, according to my personal experience. I could really get into a lot of unique things there, and I could show you a lot of different hospitals too, uh, as far as the rural ones that are extremely packed with people and extremely dirty, or the really modern ones that maybe are a step up from this one. But this was a good basic look at the inside of a Chinese hospital. And you might find out that it's gonna be a lot cheaper than what it might cost you back home. But that'll be for part two, where I'll talk a little bit more about Chinese healthcare in particular and the costs involved. This was more or less just telling you about what the inside of a Chinese hospital looks like and the differences between that and say, your typical Western style hospital. We'll talk about that in part two.